What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today I'm just going to do a quick midweek overview video of the Hobby King Rad Jet on 8S that I just posted a video on on Sunday, I believe, Saturday or Sunday. So I've had quite a few people ask me to do a video explaining the setup. So we're going to go over that. So basically, it is a stock airframe Rad Jet. Only thing I did was cut the little tip tanks off that were on the wing here. I know some people will say that if you cut the tip tanks off, it flies like crap, blah, blah, blah. Those tip tanks are going to do nothing for flight performance or stability other than create drag. They have no vertical performance, nothing. They're going to create drag and that's it. So cutting them off doesn't going to do anything to hurt the actual flight performance of the aircraft. And if you watch the video, you will see how slow it flies. So airframe wise, completely stock, just cut the tips of the tanks off on the wings. I might cut the wings a little shorter because it has a really long wing but it does help with the slow fly characteristics of the aircraft. Uh, factory carbon bar straight across. The airplane is extremely light. We're gonna weigh it in a minute so you guys can see how light it is. Uh, everything is just glued together with some 30 minute epoxy, glued the wing halves on, glued the rudders on. So what I did, opened the aircraft out of the box. As you know, it comes as a plug and play airplane. So I carefully took an X-Acto knife and I cut the top off here. And I cut it here, and then I slowly cut the back motor section cover off, the little motor section here. I cut this completely out carefully, just went around it a bunch of times, scored it, and got it all apart without breaking anything. So then I decided to slowly start cutting the inside. If you guys know, there's a plywood motor mount in here with plywood spacers to the factory motor that goes right here. So I just kept cutting real slowly and got the factory motor and the motor mount to all come out as one piece. So here is the factory motor mount, wood spacers and motor. This is what's gonna come in your rad jet, plug and play. The wires were glued at the bottom. They glue them down like this, but it all came out in one piece. Just took a little bit of cutting, a little bit of prying and we got it all apart. So then it ran into the trouble. This is a T-Motor F80 2500 KV. So we ran into the trouble of the T-motor would not fit with this bolt pattern, and if it did, the T-motor is very narrow compared to this factory motor, so it wouldn't stick out far enough. So, what I did was I took a piece of 1 8 inch plywood, and I used an inch and a half hole saw, and I cut a hole, inch and a half hole, from the 1 8 inch plywood, and that fit perfectly. There's a little lip right here on the inside. And when you push this together, that one and a half inch piece of plywood that I cut as a motor mount fit perfectly all the way around that little lip that's in there. So I drilled, mounted the motor, slotted the back of it. I don't know if you can see, I think it's too tight. But yeah, you can't, you could can kind of see the plywood mount in there. So anyways, I mounted the motor with the factory screws. I put a washer on them. Always make sure that the screws don't stick too far through so they touch the copper windings. But washer, Loctite, screwed the motor onto that one and a half inch plywood uh, motor mount. And then I just C8'd it in place. So I C8'd half of it. Also, I added a couple, like a degree of up thrust, just a tiny, tiny bit, which is all you need. Just need a little bit of up thrust all pusher wings you want up thrust so i added my up thrust zero degrees of left and right neutral and then i had to add a little apc spacer for the prop the back of the prop is touching the can of the motor but it's okay this is an apc uh five by five now be careful with the 2500 kv that's a lot of prop so i highly highly recommend uh, maybe going with the 1900 KV in the 5x5 prop might be a better combination for keeping it cool. And I actually do have a 1900 KV F80 I'm going to try next because I can still cut this off and change it out. But if you're going to be running the 2500 KV on 8S like this is, I would recommend either a 4x75, 475 or something along those lines would definitely be a more suitable prop for that high of RPM and amperage because I know the amperage is extremely high. So then we took out the factory ESC. It's just a little 20 amp ESC, XT60 on it. Remember the ESC was here, ran the wires up. So bottom half of the airframe is completely stocked the way they call, just CA'd the little bottom plate in place. 
ran the wires, stock servos, everything. So we are running XT30s and of course 8S and series. So we are running a, uh, we had a 6600 60, T in here with the GPS for the speed run readings. And then now I just have it on a AR4104 channel shoved all the way back. So then we are running it right now. I have new packs coming, but we are running it on the Tat2 650 milliamp 75C packs. They do great. Uh, flight time is extremely short, of course, if you are running a, a lot of throttle on your flight. But the maiden flight, we got uh, just over three minutes of mixed flying on 650 milliamps 8S. This is 8S. Just for the people that doubt it, it is 8S. We have power and four wire. So 8S, we have some uh, Redline 850s and Redline, I think 1,054 S packs coming so we can get more battery because there's tons and tons of room in here. So that goes to the next thing, ESC wise. So ESC wise, and this is another new one that I have. It is the Exceed X80 amp 2 to 8S 32 bit 8S ESC with the iFlight BL32 Pro software. So you get your ESC and it comes like this. So your ESC is gonna come out of the package like this. Now, I don't know if you could still buy the iFlight, but any 80 amp uh, ESC, two to eight S, you want a 32 bit ESC for the high RPM of the little motors, but you have your capacitor pack. I just use the one big black capacitor that it comes with, but you do get a second little gray one that's in here somewhere, but you do get a second gray one right there. But I just use the one black capacitor that comes with this and I just literally solder XT30. Now you're gonna need a BEC because these ESCs do not have a BEC in them. Also, if you look, this pad here is for telemetry, that pad that says TX. So you can run a single line and have telemetry. I have yet to play with that, but I would like to do that next just to see if we can get voltage telemetry to, or maybe RPM, I don't know. I haven't played with that yet. So you're going to need a BEC. So now BEC wise, this is what I run. Two to eight S micro five volt, nine volt BEC. You get three of them in a pack for $10. So you can see here, you just have your output, ground, ground input. So you're going to sim simple, super simple. You're gonna run your positive from your output and your ground to your receiver. And then I just run on this side of the pads. I run a line here and here. I use regular servo wire and I run positive negative to positive and negative on the micro BEC. So you'll need a micro BEC. Make sure it's 8S. If you're running 8S or 6S, these are the best deal because you can run them on from two to 8S. I buy three of them at a time, eight bucks or 10 bucks for three of them in a pack. Great deal. But there's the part number you want to find them and of course here is the part number for the esc i get all my stuff on either uh getfpv.com you can get these on ebay the t motor f80s anywhere that sells quad micro quad stuff high performance quad stuff is where you will get your escs micro becs and t motor motors so now let's throw packs in it and see what that so now as far as pack placement i lay the two 4s packs on top of each other they are a snug tight fit, so no need for Velcro or straps or anything. They literally, you got to push them in and pull them out. But where 8S is laid 4 and 4, 8S, we have our battery leads XT30s to our series connector to the ESC. Balance on this airplane, according to Hobby King, is right here. So it balances out perfectly, I mean perfect level with a tad nose down with the battery shoved here. Now when we go to bigger batteries, of course we'll have to try to move them back, play with weight around. So now the canopy will not stay on. So in the maiden flight video and the speed runs, I just use tape to hold the canopy down, but I'm gonna figure out something more permanent. I'll probably do a little latch back here with a little tongue something to hold the front in place because at these high of speeds that this thing is going, that canopy will blow off immediately. So now let's go ahead and grab us a scale. Now factory ready to fly weights is 550 grams is what Hobby King says for ready to fly. So let's transfer this to grams. Okay, zeroed out in grams. Now this is completely ready to fly. 
We're coming in at 462 grams. So 88 grams less than stock. So we are almost 90 grams lighter than the stock configuration on 8S. So we are not only are we on 8S, but we are 90 grams lighter than factory. So this thing is extremely light, very, very lightweight, extreme high power. I have not watt tested it yet, but I can tell you it's insane. Go back, watch the Maiden Flight video if you haven't seen it yet. Over 200 mile per hour passes with this guy and it flies so slow as well. I mean, this is honestly, I've built a lot of high performance and speed planes, a lot of them. And I've built a lot of micro jets. I've built a lot of fun jets. And they always come in heavy with the traditional big battery, big motor, big ESC. And they just weigh a ton. This thing is still a lot of power, but super, super light. So you can literally cruise around with the motor barely spinning and just cruise around and have a great flying little airplane. Or you can open this thing up and have a 200 mile per hour missile. So there you guys go. Quick overview video of the Hobby King Rad Jet awesome airplane i mean just super cheap if you guys want to build something fast and cheap you're looking at about 200 dollars invested total that's including the price of the airframe the airplane the motor the esc batteries you're looking at right around 200 dollars for 200 miles per hour so you're looking at a dollar a mile per hour guys build yourself one it's awesome it flies great go ahead give this video a like subscribe take care and have a great day